Hi, everybody. I'm Tom Skilling, Chief Meteorologist at WGN, and I'm looking forward to joining you in person, and we'll do so shortly. I'm in transit as this tape plays. But I wanted to make my remarks in ta on tape to permit the trip down to the conference. Uh, we just got done with our 6 o'clock news show. Well, you know, it need be said that we have pressing issues facing our country and indeed our planet, and a science literate population and the world's best trained scientific minds are going to be essential to face them. The climate of this planet and the impact we, the inhabitants of Earth, are having on it are a growing concern to me and many others in my profession. Climate change isn't a hoax, it isn't fantasy. That such claims are being made are absolutely preposterous. Climate change is happening and with dire consequences already evident. Dismissal of its threat by saying climate change has always happened ignores what's different about the shifts that are currently underway. Never have adjustments to the climate occurred at the speed they're occurring at now and on a planet supporting today's huge and growing population. And such dismissal completely ignores the fact that climate change has had catastrophic effects in the past. Whole species have disappeared. Food production has been radically affected. The Vikings sailed to Greenland during a warm epoch on the planet known as the Atlantic period. Climate change after they got there and the colonies they set up on Greenland uh, perished as a result of changing temperatures and the ability to produce food. The colder Greenland was no longer as green as it was when they arrived, and the waters they sailed, even to North America, became stormier and more hostile. Some used the cool winter we went through last year in the spring and summer to claim that all is copacetic, that climate change isn't happening, saying, so where's the global warming? Such arguments confuse weather, the short-term mood of the atmosphere, with climate, which takes into account trends of weather over decades and centuries. Global warming is doing, unfortunately, just fine. It's quite alive and very well. Last year, 2013, was the fourth warmest in 133 years of records, and our planet's 10 warmest years since the start of the instrument records have all occurred since 1998. Here are some additional facts. We've had more billion-dollar weather disasters than ever before, seven of them in the last year alone, 11 the year before. There have been 151 such disasters since 1980, a number without precedent. In 2012 alone, our federal government spent $100 billion on cleanups in the wake of weather disasters. That's more money than was spent by the federal government on transportation and education combined, and it amounts to an effective tax of $1,100 per taxpayer. We've had fires burning in the West and North, a region which has suffered years of drought, drought which has hit areas from the plains westward. Lake Mead, for instance, behind Hoover Dam outside Las Vegas, and the source of water for Las Vegas and Phoenix is so low, the water intakes within the dam, which channel water into turbines that generate electricity, will fail to take in enough water to produce electricity in less than a year. If significant rains beyond the flash floods of recent days and mountain snows don't come, Closer to home, residents along area rivers like the Des Plaines have been driven with regularity never before seen from their homes in recent decades. These folks will tell you they have never faced the flooding they've seen with the regularity it's been occurring in recent decades. Extremes of weather, whether of temperature or precipitation, hit with greater frequency and consequence. Heat killed 50,000 in Europe in 2003, 60,000 in Eastern Europe and Western Russia only seven years later in 2010, when temperatures in regions there at latitudes equivalent to Hudson Bay in North America were hit with weeks of 100 degree and higher temperatures. 6,000 perished this past autumn in the Philippines during Super Typhoon Haiyan, the strongest landfalling tropical cyclone ever observed on the planet. Its 20-foot storm surge leveled low-lying regions of that country like a deadly tsunami, and it came at the end of an amazingly active Western Pacific typhoon season, which featured storm after storm. While we shivered here in the Midwest this past winter, Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Miami registered record winter warmth. So did Alaska where mammoth avalanches, some of the largest ever observed, occurred. The UK and Europe also saw record warmth and prolific rains. More rain fell this winter on England than at any time since the 1700s. The Thames River reached a 60-year high.
A barrage of storms brought record 80 to 90 foot waves to the UK, the highest on record there. These waves ravaged coastal communities and highways. It was so warm, bears came out of hibernation in the warmth across Scandinavia in January, and vegetation bloomed. Snow had to be imported at the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia because of the warmth. Spectators there sunbathed in 68 degree temperatures. It was the warmest Winter Olympics on record. Record heat has occurred in the last year in Australia and South America. Arctic ice has dropped to its fifth lowest level since satellite records began. A quarter of the region's ice has disappeared since the late 1970s, and the ice loss is occurring faster than even computer models have predicted. An area of ice the size of 1.7 times the size of Texas disappeared last year alone. Warming in the Arctic is occurring at more than twice the rate it's occurring here in the mid-latitudes. Ice forms in the winter, but then the shorter cold seasons mean the ice is thinner and it melts more quickly in summer. I travel to Alaska with some frequency and nearly all of the state's glaciers are in retreat. 10,000 Alaskan walruses were forced to beach themselves as the ice on which they typically rest melts. Native villages lining Alaska's coastline are crumbling into the ocean because the ice, which once buffered these communities from wave action, has disappeared. Diminishing Arctic ice may increase tensions between nations in the years and decades ahead as resource grabs take place as the ice coverage fades. Sea ice has increased in Antarctica, but land-based ice continues losing mass. The continent has the highest mean elevation, more than 6,000 feet above sea level, which is why the ice trends there are different than in the north. But when ice loss in the northern Arctic regions and the sea ice gain around Antarctica are analyzed, ice coverage on Earth is still diminishing, contributing to rising sea levels. And a report just recently indicates the whole West Antarctic ice sheet is so unstable it's expected to collapse in the next two centuries, if not sooner. We interviewed Nobel Prize winning climate change researcher Dr. Don Wobbles in our attempt to get the message out to the public uh, on climate change. We also visited the national supercomputing application folks there who are trying to visualize climate change. And we filed this report for our viewers back last September. I want to share it with you now. Hurricane Sandy. Killer floodwaters and raging wildfires. Scientists from all over the world say our changing climate may be impacting these extreme weather events. We have a lot of concerns about you know, what those changes in climate can mean to us. It's virtually certain that human activities are responsible for the changes in climate that we've been seeing over the last 50 years. Professor Don Wobbles is part of a United Nations organized community that brings together the world's greatest science minds. 830 authors volunteer their time and expertise to increase our understanding of what's going on with Earth's climate system. So it's really a look at the science by the scientists to assess what is it we know, what has, which, what has changed in our knowledge, uh, and to make recommendations then to governments to say, well, you know, is this important enough? You should be worrying about it. Wobbles tells WGN that the IPCC report will state that warming temperatures are creating a really different climate on our planet. The melting of ice near the poles could raise sea levels by one to four feet by the end of the century, swapping coastal cities like Miami and New York. The report also links climate change to more extreme weather events. So if we say it's virtually certain, that means it's a 99 to 100% likelihood that this observation is real. Because the media often wants to treat this as a contentious issue, they, they want to show both sides, um, they actually get the impression that there is two sides. And, uh, and in fact, uh, the reality is there really isn't another side to this. Their confidence grows with each improvement in supercomputers. This brand new national petascale computing facility is located on the campus at the University of Illinois. Just listen to that roar. These are supercomputers at the University of Illinois crunching numbers. The climate is a complex system, so is our atmosphere, and it takes a lot of computing power to forecast and visualize it. The Blue Waters supercomputer is one of the biggest supercomputers anywhere in the world. It's the biggest at a university campus anywhere in the world, and it can do quadrillions of calculations every second. If you wanted to do a quadrillion calculations, you would need millions of years with a calculator. The numbers, though, 
are, become more real to people when they can see them through the visualization process. Donna Cox and the visualization team of the U of I have been working with Don Wobbles and other scientists to transform complex mathematical computations into stunning simulated video displays. Uh, we have many, many testimonials from scientists that once they have seen their data visualized, moving, evolving, that they have made new discoveries. For instance, tornado researchers couldn't see double funnels in their data until it was visualized. This partnership of art and science is a powerful tool to actually show people the warming of the atmosphere both now and in the future. And what is possible if we become better stewards of the environment? How can we take our understanding of, of the complex science of what's going on in the climate system and translate it into something that the public can readily understand and say, wow, this, is, this tells me why this is so important. Greater computing power also allows scientists to get down to much better resolutions on smaller scales, like predicting regional climates. Illinois may be becoming uh, more like eastern Texas, more like the Dallas area, for example, where you know, most of the summer is above 90 degrees. You have a month of 100 degree days. Well, that's not Illinois as we know it right now. That scenario is for the end of the century and assumes continued heavy use of fossil fuels. Wobble <laughs> says here in the Midwest, we have a greater likelihood of extreme precipitation events followed by many droughts. That could have huge implications for Illinois agriculture. Climate change is happening, and we have to communicate that. There's no hidden agenda here. Climate change clearly is a world problem. It isn't just a U.S. problem by any means. You know, it's not that we're going to totally prevent future climate change, but we can keep it to the level where we'll have much less effect than if we followed the pathway we're on now.